Hello, welcome back. In this video, we'll learn how do we provision the Apache server from Amazon Web Services. Alright, so if you look, this is how our system under test deployment layout is going to look like, and this is the web tier. So basically, Amazon EC2 will provision you a machine, and on top of that machine, we need to install a operating system, and that operating system is Linux. Ubuntu 12.4 alright so that's the first requirement and second requirement is once we have installed Linux Ubuntu 12.4 we are going to install Apache web server and we'll download the Apache software from Apache foundation and install on this machine and next thing we need to enable PHP 5 to run in this Apache web server and on top of that this web tier is going to talk to a Oracle database. So to talk to Oracle database from the middle tier, PHP needs an additional driver and that driver is called OCI or Oracle Call Interface. Okay. So we need this Oracle Call Interface software to be installed and configured in this web tier. Once we have installed all this software, then we are ready to... Okay. So now let's go to Amazon Web Services website is called aws.amazon.com. I have already created my account, so therefore I will click on AWS Management Console. Then it will ask me the user ID and password. Then I sign in. And then this is called AWS Web Services. And if you remember, I need to create, I need to go to EC2, Elastic Compute Cloud. From where I need to reserve a, uh, uh, I, I need to reserve a machine. So let's click on EC2. And this is the EC2 dashboard. And here, let's launch an instance. So when you launch an instance, the first step is choosing an Amazon machine AMI. So let me tell you what is this Amazon machine AMI is. So essentially what we have, we have a EC2 machine and on this EC2 machine we need to load an image. So we load an image, we are going to have a machine with software installed. For example, if you choose Amazon Linux AMI 201309, so that means you know this is going to give a machine with Linux 3.4 and MySQL, Python, Ruby, and Tomcat, and so on. All right. So, so this is where this is the, this is the um, this is what is all about AMI or Amazon Machine Image. So, what you can do here is that there are three options. The first option is to choose a Ubuntu 12.4 AMI. So, to choose an Ubuntu 12.4, you go to Community AMI, and here you type Ubuntu. Let's see. See, if you type Ubuntu, so you are seeing around 7000 AMI that is available on Ubuntu. I let's I put Ubuntu 12. Let's see what's what's coming on. It's like now it's only 5000 images. So essentially, we need to figure out an Ubuntu 12.4 image. And looks like this one is going to probably going to have a Ubuntu 12.4 on AMD hardware, all right. Or if you want to go for i386 or x86, so those kind of hardware. So you have to choose different AMI. So essentially, what you need to figure out, you need to figure out what is the right AMI to choose. So here is a deal. So as I told you, my end goal here is to install all these things. Okay. So I can start like this. I I, I can have an option where I install. Ubuntu 12.04 AMI. Ubuntu 12.04 AMI is going to give me only Linux operating system. So that means if I start my EC2 instance with 12.04, I don't get anything but the Linux Ubuntu 12.04. Then what I can do, once I, inst when I install this Linux, I will go to the Apache web server and download Apache server, then install on that. Then I will go to the PHP website and download PHP and install on that. Then I'll go to Oracle OCI web website and download OCI and 
put those things. So that is what you can, you know, that is what if you go on the option 1. Option 2, there are already some AMIs that is available with Ubuntu, Apache and PHP. And if you go here, there is a website called bitnami.com. So what does bitnami.com does? They, they integrate all those open source software and package it and set and create an AMI. Say for example, this LAMP 5.421 stack says that if you use this AMI, then you are going to get uh, Ubuntu 12.4, Apache 2. Point something, MySQL 5. Point something, and PHP 5. Point something. So that exact version you can find if you go to this, uh, if you click on this. Okay. So basically, my point here is that instead of getting this vanilla 12.4 AMI, get this Bitnami image, and the Bitnami image is like this, and then what you can do, you can start your EC2 inst instance. Okay. So in this, in second case, so what you can do, you can start with Bitnami image. Okay. So start with Bitnami image. Bitnami image, however, is not going to give you Oracle call interface, which we need. Okay. And in that case, what you're going to do, you're going to install yourself, yourself the Oracle call interface. So if you want to install Oracle call interface, the best way is to Google what is the latest version of OCI on PHP. And the first thing is going to go, you're going to go to OCI 8 manual. So if you click on this, it will give you all those documentation how to install and configure. So what I have done for you, I have also created a document which I am going to put as a supplemental material so that you can install Oracle call interface using OCI8.so. So all the steps are well documented here. You have to follow and install OCI and test that OCI 8 is working or not. So that is the option number 2. In option number 3, so what I am going to do, I am going to give you an AMI. That AMI has Linux 12.4, Apache, PHP 5 and Oracle call interface. So that means out of these three different options, either you go with the vanilla Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux, then you configure yourself or you start with a bitnami image and put OCI or you use my AMI and my AMI name is this. Okay, I'm also going to put a uh, notes so that you can uh, you can you can uh, so that you can find out my AMI. Okay, so let's basically see like if this AMI is available or not. So go to your AWS console and here put this AMI and hit enter. Okay, so this is what is the AMI that is showing up. So you select this AMI and then here it will ask you what kind of machine that you need. Okay, so that means it's a micro instance. Like if you see, this is a number of Amazon virtual, you know, uh, CPU, and it can just take a look. Like you know, this one issue means is equivalent to a 1.2 gigahertz Optron processor. Okay, and what I will choose here, I will choose here a little bit of compute optimize. I will choose a medium. Okay, so let me choose C1 medium. Again, remember whatever you are doing right now, it's going to cost you money. Okay, so be careful, uh, you know, whenever you are doing this thing. So I'll choose a C1 medium and I say next. It will ask me how many number of instance. I just need one instance. Okay, then it will ask me a couple of other things. I just, for, for now, I'll just put whatever default. And next, I don't want to add storage. The default thing is fine. The next, this is my mid tier okay so this is a name that i give then next so here is a very important thing that what is the security group that you need to attach let's say using my security group let's say launch wizard 2 let's click on this that means what is saying is that port number 22 and port number 80 open that means let's say this is port number 22 and this is port number 80 so that means anyone outside of this firewall 
can access port number 80. It's a lot of time people do mistake. You have to ensure that you open this port 22 to access using SSH and port 80 to access using HTTP protocol. Now review and launch. Launch. It will, it will ask you one more thing. What is the key pair? So let's say we want to create a new key pair. I am showing you how to do that. So let's say this key pair name is MEN load test. All right. Then I have to download the key pair. Control V. So this is the PEM file. Then what you need to do, you need to open a software called PuttyGen, which is installed already for me. So I will install, I will start PuttyGen. I will load that key. So once you load this thing, you go to save private key. Yes. And then let's say this is meant one to three. So meant one to three is my private key. Okay. So now what we're going to do, we are going to launch instance. So it will take some time. And if you come here, so this my mid tier machine is initializing. That means it's launching right now. In due time, it takes maybe minute or so, it will be ready. Let's create, go to the elastic IP. Okay, so basically I have an I have an IP address that has not been yet associated with an instance. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the elastic IP and then I'm going to associate that address to the instance, instance mid tier, so associate. Okay. So with this, what I have right now is that a machine is getting ready. It's now basically initializing. It's not yet ready. So once it's ready, it will say that two by two status check successful. This is the IP address by which I can SSH to that machine. So let's do that to put it. So this is software by which I can SSH to any machine. And then my host name is 54204236364. And then I go to this SSH, go to authorization, authentication, browse, and get this PPK, meant one to three PPK. And then I'll say open it. Say yes. So now the login is bit nami. Okay. So now essentially what I am seeing here is that if I do a PS minus EF. See, like you now these are the HTTP processes. Apache web server is running right now, and all these things are ready. Like you now, whatever configuration that I wanted is now available and ready. Okay, and so this is how you are going to provision your web tier and install all those things that is required for our next step. Thank you for your time. See you in next video where we are going to configure the database system.